Well, hello, YouTubers. This is uh, Jared. I, uh, as I mentioned in my previous video, a brief mention, anyways, but it was about the gear for my uh, my mill. But I came into this. This is a mill or a lathe that I uh, was able to get, and I was going to do uh, a basic rundown, a review, uh, why I got this one. Not that if I had <laughs> access to more funds I would have probably got the next biggest size you know because it has a uh, complete gearhead lathe and everything so this is the geo 602 this is a 10 by 22 lathe okay and I wanted to go over some things I wanted to probably take some images and I could post them on here as I'm making this video um, because I did look to a number of other people that did purchase this I I was actually watching people do the the 7x14 lathe and the G4000, which is a 9x19, and even the 8x16, I believe. Now, um, you know, the bigger lathe, the better, I think, in some regards. I had considered, I've been considering getting a lathe for a while. I've been trying to do as much stuff on my mill as I could. And... I was able to get this, and so when it came time to purchase, I was doing a lot of reviewing. I was actually going on Grizzly's website, reading the stuff. I was considering buying old iron, you know, big lathe, you know, even like a World War II era lathe. I, I like some of the, some of those kind of machines and stuff like that. But, you know, I, this is my first lathe purchase, and so I was a little apprehensive. And I don't know what to necessarily look for. And I didn't want to buy one that was all worn out and I just don't know what to look for. You know, I was thinking about going to find some place to, you know, that were like re maybe refurbished one and, it, you know, it's all set up and maybe redone. But then, you know, I don't know how much that would really cost. And size wise, you know, to get like a 2,000 pound machine, because, you know, I could probably get about a 2,000 pound machine, you know, big or something like that. Because they, they, they come around every once in a while. You know, I maybe paid more for shipping and stuff like that. But, you know, with my budget-wise, with the, all the things that I've got going on, uh, this is what I ended up doing. And the other reason why I kind of done that is because I'm working on some different things. And I'm not sure if I was going to end up doing metric stuff or not. And... You know, this this does come with some different change gears, and so I didn't know if I was going to uh, end up doing that. So actually, I want to show you what I what I done here is I had a, <laughs> an extra toolbox here, so craftsman. I have several other ones, and you know, it's this is how tall it is to me. I'm <laughs> see if I can do this. I've never really filmed on my put up myself on here, but see, I'm I'm this tall. You know, I'm five I'm five ten, and it's. So it's up here, and I don't I I didn't buy the the thing because I had this one here, and this is this is how it's turned out. But so it's a ten by twenty two lathe. It's got a, the five inch chuck, and it's six and a half I think by the four inch. And let me let me get the other stuff. I want to get all the accessories. That, that was one of the reasons I did decide to to purchase it. I'll just I'll take this with me, I suppose. Trying to get some stuff done in my garage. I got clutter everywhere. But here's the four jaw chuck. See, and it looks like a regular chuck. I did not like the chuck that came on the 9 by 19, which is the G4000. This one is only a little bit more. So if I stepped away from the 7 by 14 lathe, you know, which I did consider, but then by the time, you know, I'm working on some kind of bigger things. I wanted some more rigidity, which that one might have done all right, but like almost everything in the thing was plastic. And they, their little machine shop has a lot of extra parts to replace all the plastic stuff out. There's a tailstock. I'm, I'm just barely getting it set up. I'm just barely got it out of the crate and stuff. I was going to do like an unboxing, but I'm kind of doing it now. <laughs> so, we got a pretty good size. You know, faceplate. And it has an eight thread, 
inch and like three quarter or something. It seemed like more of a nominal size. The other one was metric on the G4000 to thread on end, and it seemed like I had more adaptive options for this G4000. I did not, uh, I thought it looked like a face plate, the, the four jaw chuck that it, the other one had, and, and there was no four jaw chuck at all with the uh, 7x14. And the 8x16, it actually could cut left-handed threads because uh, you had an because it has a variable frequency drive. And I think the the next one up, the book, the book in here, the Geo 752. That's the one. It's it's exactly the same thing, but it's got a variable frequency drive. But it obviously costs more. And honestly, I think I chose this one over that. Because, you know, if, if you're trying to run at a really low speed, you're turning the motor lower. But with this one here, <clears throat> I'm just doing it with the, the pulley. So the motor is just a one, one speed. It only turns one speed. So I'll, I use the leverage and everything for, for the low speed by, by gear ratio, by belt drive ratio and the change on it. One of the only things I really didn't like about this is it does have these, these plastic gears. I believe the 8x16 and the G4000, which is the 9x19, didn't have, they actually did have metal gears. That was one thing, but I didn't like, it had a really small metric belt. Now this might be a metric belt, but it, it's, it, it's a thicker belt. You know, so I, that was one of the other reasons too, um, for, for the considerations for that but you know if you looked at it you can look at the pictures you can look at the manual you can look at the other other people's videos that had bottom and you know for this size you know I, ha I had to hoist this up I had to hoist it and you could probably pick it up because it's like about 100 pounds or like maybe one other person unless you're a tough person to pick up the the 7 by 14 the other ones get a little bit heavy uh, I believe this one there's my rating thing here uh, see it says it's 330 pounds so you know, they got this cart on here, and, you know, I, I'm a little obsessive compulsive. I want some things to be, you know, even, even. So, I, uh, this was weathered. I put it, went down and got, a, like, a melamine board thing to put this in here. I got several tool carts in here, so I ended up just, just using this one. And I'm just going to repurpose it just for this. So, you know, I measured exactly here, and then exactly from bolt hole to bolt hole because the chip pan comes up in the top and I've seen some other people that had complaints about this and maybe I don't know if they just didn't manufacture it because mine my manufacture date here 9 2018 and uh, so they've done pretty good on mine because you see I got a gap here and and so this actually fits all the way flush against the board underneath it here so I don't have to do anything and I thought some other people maybe had them upside down or something but yeah uh but, you know, they should have complained about it. Maybe had them send them a new one or something. But, you know, it's got the bolt there. Bolt there. I just reused the bolts off of... They came off the skid. You have to pull them out of the bottom of the, the crate. But this has got hardened ways. Uh, hardening ground ways. See? Heat treatment. So, you know probably end up could probably last longer than his other ones i believe the 8 by 16 and the 7 by 14 do not have heat uh hardened ways heat treated hard ways they have uh precision ground is what they say so that was another reason you know uh i wanted to try to have a lathe that would probably last me for a while so i'm not wanting something bigger after a while i you know, run out of it, and if I'm, because I mean, I could run, so I think I run some pretty good size stuff on here, I haven't put the tail stock back on, I was trying to lighten some of the stuff, and you know, with the chains on here, I just didn't want some of my precision things being, you know, I just wanted to be careful, I just don't want them to get banged up or anything like that, um, all of them have this uh, turret four-way post, non-adjustable, a lot of people are, uh, buy their ones afterwards. You have to step up into a you know about a three thousand dollar lathe before they add a included in a Loris tool post, whatever. But the other one of the other reasons th this model here to adjust the lathe or, or excuse me your cross slide. Make sure I got good focus on here. You got your bolt right here, 
if you watch the other people, you have to move your cross slide way out and the bolt is in, the bolts are in the center right here. So you have to back your cross slide way out and then undo it with like I think an Allen wrench. But I've got, you know, a bolt on this side and a bolt on this side. And I've seen some other people do some modifications. I might eventually do like a bigger stabilizing place because they say they, you know, the, the way it's designed right here, they put like a bigger square block and do something like that. And it added just an extra little bit of uh, rigidity into it. Not, and I, I understand that this one's pro probably fairly good. You know, I have an indifferent feeling. I know that this is a Chinese lathe and, you know, I kind of did want to have like a, something that was, you know, make it like an old iron or, you know, I, I don't know how to feel about some of that, Okay. Um, you know, cause I, I can only afford, you know, I barely was able to scrape by to get this. And, uh, you know, I was almost thinking I was going to have to afford only like the 7x14 was able to push it up a little bit and get this bigger one. And this is about $1,500 for, for this, you know, and I considered like Bolton tools and some other places like that, but you're talking about spending like about $2,000 or more. And then you don't even get any accessories. You don't get four jaw chuck and some of these other things like that. And I think the Bolton one actually had a po powered cross feed for the same size uh, lathe. It was 10 by, maybe it's 10 by 26 or something. I don't know. The next size up was like 11 by 26 from Grizzly. And I think it actually had less, um, because it had a different kind of lead screw. This is like a 12 thread per inch. I don't know if my, my label says this. Uh, and I think the Bolton one, see I have... The tail stock's an MT3, and it's an MT4 on the spindle. And I think it was the next one down, like an MT3 on the spindle and an MT2 on the tail stock. And, uh, yeah, here it is, lead screw. Lead screw, 3 quarters by 12 threads per inch. So, when you're looking at all the different options, because this has a small change gear here, or change change box. But I was looking at this, and I don't know, I mean, it looks like there is some oil. And I don't know if it's just preservative oil. I'm trying to read in through the book and do that, so I, I don't know if I'm going to flush that out. And I, I haven't even broke this, and I have not plugged it in yet. I'm uh, getting ready to wipe this down with some W40 and do all this. I'm just doing my, my video thing here. Um, but, yeah, I believe there was more options. I got, like, 33 st standard thread options. Where's my... I gotta get used to this this chart here. Uh, if you go to Grizzly, I mean, you, you're gonna have these these screenshot images in the in the online manual, so you don't have to worry about looking at mine here. I mean, it, this 150 to 2400 RPMs. It doesn't cut left-handed threads, but I've seen a couple of people that have um, made an option here there because this has like a little swing arm. You you loosen this. And and this this whole arm thing comes down and you know you, you change these gears out here these you don't this one you don't touch here but uh, can't, I can't remember how to I'm gonna have to get used to it. I watched a number of other videos you have like a A B C on your spindles for your speeds and then here's your 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 gears so yeah I guess I guess this one is a change out one because that one's where it says 40 there, is that, is that right? I think, yeah. Because when you see the cross, I, I figured it out that when you have the little cross line, that that's where you have a gear. So there's this, this top one, and then you have the 60 and 27. Is that, I don't know, let's see if that's right. This is, a, this is the 56. Oh no, maybe I'm maybe I'm on the off one. Maybe that this is the the forty. Yeah, because when you have the little cross line, it's supposed to be the bottom one. So let's just start at the bottom then, I suppose. So one hundred four, because it's supposed to have these ones come in with it. One hundred four. I'm gonna focus. And then fifty six and one twenty seven. So. So there's two gears here, so that's the that means basically the cross line means it's the the mounting shaft right there because there's a one shaft, two shaft, three shaft. So that's what it means. There's one shaft right here, two shaft, and three shaft, and this 
40 is probably this one then. This this very top one on the actual spindle, the headstock spindle. So Uh, so anyways, but I've seen somebody else do a modification and they put an extra gear in here between this one and this one and that causes it to reverse. And so for this one, doing left-handed threads, how much threading am I going to do with some of my different projects, let alone doing like left-handed threading? It would be a nice option. The 8x16 I believe does it. Uh, maybe the 7x14 if I remember, I think it might be it does. The, the G4000 does not and this one does not. But that's one modification. I saw somebody else put an extra thing to use one of the extra change gears in here. And then it would reverse it and, you know, do some stuff like that. Um, so just look at the G. I don't know. I can't remember where I, where I saw that from. Uh, it might have said something about Jim's Joe 602 uh, lathe modifications or something. It was, it was a pretty interesting video. He, he put some different kind of belts on here, like those ones that you get at Harbor Freight, the... The variable length ones that you've got all the pieces with it so that's that's an option for me um, let's see let's see what else yeah, I did like the the change box option I think the G4000 had one but it had the little slide levers and it wasn't in a oil bath this one's in an oil bath so you know that's not a, a super big deal to me but having if I'm going to think about having a lathe that also does all the metric stuff and then it has more cutting options and feed rates than any of the other ones and it even has more than the 11 by 26 I mean you can go and do the comparison because that's what I did on, on Grizzly's website if you were doing that I was comparing you know other manufacturers to try to get the biggest bang for my buck that was an important thing for me uh, my general impression with it you know being a Chinese lathe, because I, I've that's what everybody's been saying. You get this one or that one, and all these mini lathes, they're all made out of this a lot of the same manufacturers out of China. They probably get the same basic stock, and then some of them are for the 22 or the 24 26 or or something like that. And uh, so the castings are all fairly same, you know, the, the carriage might be slightly different for each one's little specifications and stuff like that um you know i kind of just dealt with it but it kind of one thing that bothers me about some of these different machines and stuff like this well you have you know some of these standard gears honestly i i don't know if they're like one mod i think these probably are it'll do standard threading but probably off of metric size gears actually let me have these back right here these are i know these are one mod because they're, they're supposed to to fit that so i wonder if these that fits just oh, let me get my in my picture here yeah which i pretty much expected these gears are are one one mod you know, I'll have to research it. I mean, you know, obviously when you're going around this much like, like this, it's got to be that. So these probably are all one mod gears. But they cut, uh, oh no, maybe this is just for the feed. I think the other change gears. But they, I don't know how they are going to fit together. Obviously this is probably like a two mod, two, two mod gear. So I, I think these gears are, these are metric gears, so twice the size. This is a one mod. And that one's the the plastic drive gear. Well, so I've had I've seen some comments on oh the, it's got a couple plastic gears that are you know sacrificial gears or something like that. Well, to a certain degree, that could possibly be it. I don't know if it's designed to be a little bit quieter or a little bit smoother on some aspects of that. But it even says it's just in the design right here. This is a um. Oh, <laughs> I better look that up. I can't remember. I think I put a comment on something like that, and I think it was on page 62 here. Uh, I can't remember. Yeah, shear pin. Yeah, I couldn't remember the name for, you know, roll pin, shear pin. But that, it says it right here in the book. It's page 62. Lead screw shear pin replacement. Because that's what it says. Uh, 
And even though it has plastic gears, I was indifferent to that because I've been dealing with my mill and I'm making some metal gears for it. I haven't seen, and I did a lot of research and trying to find videos and stuff like that, and I haven't seen a whole lot of anybody having to replace these. These gears, all these gears right here, that's the only thing that they do is change the gear ratio compared to the headstock for for your sp your spindle to turn the lead screw um, for threading or just uh, your feed rate. That's all they do. And if you got into a position, that, that's what it says, is the shear pin supposed to go. I believe the 8x16 has that, the 9x19, the G4000, and this one does, and, and probably up. But uh, the, 7, the 7x14, yeah, I think I said it, it, does, it doesn't have that. But it does have these plastic gears, but I'm already in the mode of putting some metal gears in here. And, you know, I'm pretty cautious about what I do and stuff like that, so not that... It, you know, I don't think I'd ever run into a, a problem being pretty cautious, not crash the carriage into the, the thing or anything. So, uh, let me think, what else? Yeah, I already, I already talked about the belts. I did, I did like the, the options for this. I mean, honestly, I've, I could probably find a, I'm going to have to look into that because it was a bigger belt. The 8x16 and the 9x19 had a smaller belt and a real flimsy looking small like 5 millimeter belt or something like this. And I did like this this belt a little bit bigger. And so this this in this mode, it only has one change option. So... And this is all in the book, and the manual's online. And this this manual that I was just showing you, that this is completely posted online, so you don't have to worry about anything that I'm trying to do here, because you can download this. You know, you go to Geo Six or the Geo Six Hundred Two off the Grizzly website, and then you'll, you know, that's one thing I did like do like about Grizzly is that they at least got that. Oh, the toolbox. Yes. Oh, tripping over another toolbox. Let me get to uh, cabin here. Let me use this drawer. So this might be like an initial review I do of this. Uh, um, if I feel like I, you know, after I've done the te my running, um, I've tried to do some converting and do, try to do some sort of lathe stuff because I do have an adapter for my GL704 mill. Uh, with the lathe spindle, and I've tried to do some stuff like that, which is just really not adequate because, um, let, let me talk about that for just a second. N you know, when you have your you have your base here, and you have your dovetails and stuff like this. So I, what I was doing, I was turning this sideways because I have a an R8 adapter, and this is the lathe chuck that came with it, and so. You know, obviously trying to make a mill do lathe work doesn't work, but it was what I, I had at the at the time to try to do it. I even tried to do it vertically and, and do some different things. So it, it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't do that good. And that's why I just, you know, when I had the option to get a, an actual lathe, I did. <clears throat> but this is what came in the, the toolbox. So you get your... I still have some old leftover tools from before. So you got your two T handles, one for the three jaw, one for the four jaw. And these are the extra jaw set for your your three jaw right here. See these are inside jaws and these are the external jaws. And Really, really cheesy screwdrivers, and that's what everybody said before. So you got some extra hardware items. I don't know the replacement things, and I really don't know where any of that goes. I don't know why I have a whole bag. Everything seems to be put into place. I mean, except for the handle, but that's in here too. Here's the other chain gears. You got a whole bag of these right here, and these are yeah metal. The only ones that on this whole thing are those ones I showed you on the. They're already installed. Uh, 
Um, yeah, but as, as I was mentioning, uh, you know, this is just, I'm just doing my basic rundown. I'm doing a comparison, what I went through, it, um, why I purchased this one. I was trying to get the biggest, best lathe that I could for the amount of money that was, um, came into my being to, to purchase this. So I have, this is your center for the headstock. This is the MT4 dead center. They're all dead centers. And you have these... I don't know. I think these wrenches might actually look a little bit better than the ones that came with uh, my mill. So these ones might not may, may not be too bad. Maybe they've improved a little bit like that. Here's the here's the handles. I have this you know plastic little dinky toolbox. And well, I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad we have all the, the gears. I'm the the gears are good. You know, it's nice for the centers, but these you know <laughs> the, these really soft cheesy pine handles you know, most people like me who are thinking about doing stuff have had some mechanical experience and probably have some other tools because i do not use these for the i don't use them for anything They're, i you know what one thing i can say about grizzly is um you know save the money on this cheesy crap and you know you get two dead centers i'd rather i had to get one from i bought an extra one from I think it came from Char's though, you know, I, I got it off of eBay, but I think it was Char's built or something, so I really don't know. So here's, uh, you know, I took those off, they're trying to lighten things up and get them out of the way, my, my steady rests. I didn't want, I'm trying to be really delicate and really obsessive compulsive about doing this, but I bought this one. Yeah, live center. Uh, I don't know. I've, I've never done it, and I don't know the really purpose between dead center, live center, and everything, but the idea of having the, the bearing thing and everything, uh, I don't want to have to deal with the dead centers. I might not never really use them, so we'll just, we'll just see. I uh, don't have all my other things in. I got them from Harbor Freight to, to use, because I needed those, because I'm getting ready to make those gears for my replacement on, on my other things, so I'm going to have to go there and do that. And... I don't know how many people really do a lot of um, center work. I mean, in videos and stuff like that, I'd like to see some people do that. I mean, I bought a lathe kit because I, I was trying to do some lathe things. I built a little thing to mount to my GLC 704, my, my mill. And uh, so I was doing a little bit of stuff, and, and I did okay with it. It just, you know, was, wasn't stable enough. I was going to do some other modifications to make, like, my own follow rest and stuff like that. And, you know, if I'm trying to turn a little something down, it's easier than trying to uh, <laughs> mill it, but now I've got a lathe, so I'm not gonna bother. I have a, a proper tool to do the proper thing. And I have uh, a drill, and here's the MT3 taper that's gonna fit the tailstock. Um, one thing I did say is, well, that's one of their advertisements from Grizzly, is that they do have the big boy tailstock on the 7x14. Other than the whole, all the different plastic gears and stuff like that, it is a variable drive, so it does left-handed threads too. And that was, that was some some pretty good selling features. It was just so, so much plastic stuff, and a number of people have had to replace them. And, you know, that's littlemachineshops.com uh, or something, I think. Uh, there's a big following, and, and that's a common thing to do. And I didn't want to have to buy that and then buy a whole bunch more gear stuff, because if I'm trying to cut some heavier things and stuff like that but you know i'd rather just save the money just have like a live center in a truck instead of some of these other dead centers and these cheesy tools i mean really i mean it's just but but i uh you do get the that was the biggest selling point is for the cost and what else was i thinking about I to show oh the tail stock so i have that oh i think i did show that over here but the, the tail stock, because um, I almost thought about looking at the Harbor Freight one too, the smaller one, but I was comparing those ones, and then I was able to step it up to this. But I reached down there. It was some sort of a thing. It was hard to reach the bolt stuff like that, I guess. And my my tail stuck here. But the some of the other brands like Bolton Tools. Their tail stock, I think, was a little bit smaller. It was the same size of lathe, I think, almost 
virtually the same size, but it was only an MT2 attachment size. And the Harbor Freight, the small one that they have, the 7 by 12 or whatever, because I think they have a 7 by 10 and a 7 by 12. And none of their dials, or at least made this main dial here, uh, uh, you didn't have no numbers and stuff on there. Oh, I guess that's kind of the pointer thing there. I don't even focus here. But, yeah. Oh, there goes my chip pen over there. For the, I took that off of here because I've got to... I still got to clean everything up. One, I just w I haven't gotten to it yet, but I do want to change that out because I want the adjustability. And that's the biggest thing that everybody does is the... Change out the tool post for that. But... I do like the the cross the cross slide and all this, and I don't know if they were a little bit different, or actually I think if you un undo this off of here, this whole thing is part of the the top of this uh, the cross slide because I think that turns. Let me try that. <clears throat> now I'm gonna do the, the next one. Up. Might as well try out these tools to see if they. So I'm gonna have to. Oh, well, it's gonna be a 14. Jeez. Okay, so. Oh, see, look at this. Look at. I got a 12 and a 14, and I got these bigger ones, which were kind. 19 millimeter was the size of the bolt under here that came, the bolted it to the the skid, the crate. So. I'm not sure where else the 19 millimeter goes. Maybe on this thing right here. No, nope, this is the 17. But these, oh, look at this. Look at the play on these tools. See? Look at it. Yeah, see? I save, save the freaking cost of doing this and give me a stupid live center, Grizzly. I mean, really. Alright. Let me get grab that other one back out here. Cause I'm gonna turn this. Let me crank that down pretty tight, which is nice because you don't want when it's being shipped in a cargo container or whatever from China, and then goes to Grizzly's uh, warehouse. So let's see what I'm doing here. Focus, focus. So under this other side here. So it's the two clamping bolts on either side so you can turn the your degree angle. I, I don't know if they did some other updates because I kind of like how the numbers are. I don't know how super accurate they are because I might get some sort of protractor thing to... Yeah. It looks like a pretty good etch mark that they got on here too. I don't know if it... How accurate it is. I mean, I still got it gunked. I should have cleaned this up a little bit more before I did all this. Yeah, I got a rag here. I uh, I did like the modification that I saw somebody do because there's only this two, the two bolts that hold this upper plate, and you know, and it doesn't have even clamping, so it could maybe teeter a little bit, as I think what they talked about. So, but I still. But they're all that way. The only, all of them, the other ones below it, the nine, come on. Let's kind of focus while I'm talking, I suppose. Yeah, I, li I like those because I think some of the other ones had like a little plastic thing that kind of bolted on here or something and the top part of it turned. I like this like a lot better. See, the whole thing turns in there and they're all, the mine are engraved in there. They're, yeah, those are, those are engraved in there. They're, that's not like a little tape thing or some sort of riveted on cover plate or something. So I, this is one of the other things why I did like this one. Other than I might redo this this plate like I saw some of those other people do. That uh, they made a elongated plate. Had this bolt and it had like another plate down here. and So it had more. Well they might have actually drilled a hole out here on the end. So you had like a bolting, a clamping here, clamping in the middle and a clamping on the end. So it you know not, we didn't have no teetering capability um, let's see here's the cross slide 
on. So like this, that's what I'm talking about right here. This is this little riveted on plate. Some of the other models lower down had things like that on it. But so that's my backlash right there. I don't know. It's probably not adjusted, and I'm probably gonna pull a bunch of this stuff apart. I'm I'm probably gonna pull this all apart and clean everything out. I know people talked about they might put this stuff together in a hurry. Um Actually, I'll show you my inspection paper, too. You know, you know they, they make them. They've got big CNC machine systems or whatever cabinets over there that China's making these with. Manufacturing number. Inspector. So. Parallelism of tailstock. Longitudinal. I understand some of these things, but some of these things, you know, I mean, they're all within a pretty good spec. Spindle nose, run out. So, they've, they didn't just kind of run it through a machine and throw it in there. They at least have some sort of, you know, quality things that they are doing. I mean, which, which is fine. I think, you know, American built stuff, well, that's great and everything too, but sometimes, I mean, the whole economy stuff, I don't know. I, I have a different difference things that I can feel about it and I know there that could be a big argument with just back and forth and debate and discussions and stuff like that but yeah the machine if it's gonna it's like half and half you're gonna have like a, a standard thread for the lead screw tw 12 threads per inch to do stuff but all like all the bolts are kind of probably be metric so this like can't halfway going either way that's kind of my, I think my biggest pet peeve about it you know I just kind of have to afford what I can afford and you know, I don't know how if I like how everything goes over there to be made in China and then to, you know, to kind of undersell American stuff. But then, then you know, not always American built stuff because I've run into some stuff that's not necessarily the best. But they put that stamp on it and, you know, if quality's quality. And I'm just hoping this is going to, you know, I try to get the best quality that I could with it. But it does have some plastic gears, but I haven't heard anybody have any problem with that. So that's kind of my basic rundown. I don't think I have a whole lot else to go with it. Um, what do you notice here? Uh, you can see some other videos. Now, it's in the manual and stuff. You have these different clamp-on things. Oh, let me show you with that. I did notice... Um, you have this whole other back plate. I didn't like this intrinsic back plate that the 8x16 and the 7x14 is because it had like studs that went through this. And these ones... This is on a... Uh, one of these lathe trap plate things and it's got the eight threads per inch and it's got this locking plate thing like this uh, I've seen some people they will complained about doing that because you have to put the little pin thing in here and whatever I have that same thing on my <laughs> you know your you know your little pin here this is my geo 604 mill I was just putting the headstock back together, just kind of sitting here. But you have that thing right here. <laughs> this is what I made for that. I just made my own little spanner wrench kind of thing. I put a little bolt thing in there, bent this around a little thing, and I just made my own. So it just kind of fits around here the, like that. But if you have to turn it around, match that up, and it works. And what I use, because they give you those cheap tools, and it don't fit that very good. I actually just got this a Harbor Freight, and that's what I use. I just set this on here, and it's a it's like a, one of the ratcheting um, for tapping taps, and I put that on there because it's got it's a square, so so I've done stuff like that. That's what I do. I know I know people when they do big modifications, they t they've got like automatic power draw bars and stuff, but this is this is what I'm doing. So, if you got any other questions, comments, and everything, uh, you know, put put that on there. Uh, I'll, if you got any other questions, you want me to post some other information about here, uh, I'll do that too. Yeah, I don't I really don't know about the the whole thing about cleaning this off, about setting these off of here. This looks. I don't know if that looks like it was a little bit off. Is it, hmm. Have to get used to some of those different things but that's your your thread and dial and stuff but uh i think i'm i'm pretty well set up for this i'm gonna put it together clean, get it all cleaned up and do some test runs with it and see 
how we how we make out with it. I mean, this I think this is a better three jaw truck than the one I bought because I think it was like some some place out of Canada. It came with an R8. It was the only place I could find that had a uh, the R8 adapter thing to go with the five jaw because I they have some three inches and four inches, but this looks like we got a ball oiler. My other lathe chuck doesn't. I actually broke the <laughs> lathe jaws, cutting a piece of plastic. It, Flung, flung out of there on my lathe or on my my mill so I've got the uh, in inside jaws I broke on them but you know hardened metals and stuff like that I cracked it right in, right in here somewhere so I don't know if the five jaws are universal or whatnot, and I don't know what brand this one San Sanui the four jaw says the same thing on it Oh, got that. So oh, hopefully I covered everything pretty well. If I got anything else there, I might do a little shakedown run and test it, and you know maybe come back and do another comment. And oh no, there's plenty, plenty of other people there, so I don't know if I'm gonna do that. But I'm gonna pick up um, on actually when I'm building it, so there'll probably be some running the operations and stuff when I'm building those other gears for the uh, my replacement combination set for my for my mill. So. That's my, my basic review, some of my basic opinions, and uh, why I purchased this one compared to some of the other models and things like that. So it was for the, all those different reasons, for the cuts both uh, standard and metric threads, all the different feed rates. It's a newer machine, so I know that the ways should be, you know, fairly, fairly good compared to a 60-year-old machine. And, you know, you get the change gears, uh, follow rest. I, I wish they... You know, I don't know. I've never used something like, I've never done a whole lot of things with these things and because they're just like bronze, I think. So I don't know how these are going to work compared to some of those ones I've seen that have the wheels on them and stuff. You have to get into like a, you know, $5,000, three $5,000 machine from Grizzly to get something like that with the Nalora's tool post. But this is stepping out of the really small hobby one and this is kind of the little bit better before getting into the all the way gearhead type of one that they have. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, well, uh, have a nice day, YouTubers.